All right, so I'm going to show you guys today how to make the uh, platter that has a linear pattern in the bottom of it, and it also has the uh, design in the back of it, and we're going to put glass down in it so it gets kind of a crackle pattern. It looks really cool. We're going to do so that there's more glaze down in the bottom so that pattern actually shows through on your piece. So showing you how to do this, we're going to start with a piece of clay, and I'm going to show you how to throw out a slab. There is ways that you can roll this out too, but the fact of the matter is that it's a lot easier if you can just throw it It's faster and gets more level. Set this off so it doesn't matter. Okay, when you throw out a slab, you're going to start with just a piece of clay. We can take this out of the pug mill, I'll show you that uh, shortly. You start with the board, make sure that uh, the board stays at the edge of the table. Keep your leg right up against it because it's going to be sliding towards your leg as you do this. And this takes a little bit of finesse to learn how to let it go. A lot of times people try to let it go too straight down. Let it go at an angle and towards yourself. And you're going to, every time you pick it up, I switch directions so it starts stretching evenly. And it's a lot like a piece of pizza dough, basically. And people have a tendency to go too long on this, so make sure that the size of your slab is typically between a quarter inch and a half inch at the most. But don't keep going until it's paper thin. So it's getting close here. If there's any spots that you need to heal up, just kind of use your hand and go across them. And when I let this go, I'm allowing it to kind of go behind my body and kind of just following through with my arms. So this is getting definitely thin enough. I'm going to stop right there. So it should be somewhere between the thickness of your pinky and your thumb. Your thumb would be that and more is too thick. It will blow up in the kiln. Your pinky or less will be too thin and it will cause it to just break pretty easily while you're working on it. So, uh, but a nice even thickness on this. And, um, by the way, if you go too straight down, first of all, you're going to hear more of a uh, connection when it hits the table. It will also stick to it more likely, and it will be thicker in the center and thinner on the sides. So make sure you're going at an angle when you let it go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a square to begin with, and I'm using my needle tool to work with. I'm going to put a piece of uh, paper towel down just because it's already a square. Uh, the size is very similar right now to the size of the bat that I'm actually going to push it down in with. I want to have a little bit more of a ledge to it, so I'm going to use this just as a guide. And I'm going to cut about maybe an inch out from it. I could use a ruler also. I'm going to grab one from the corner up here. So there are a few rulers around here that you can use. I'm going to just lay my ruler down so that it's on the ledge of the paper towel and that gives it a nice even thickness everywhere. The scraps can go back into the pug mill. Don't put them into the trash because they can be reused over and over again. And there I'm going to have a nice ledge everywhere to work with. And anytime you walk away from clay, you need to make sure that you close it up twist it and turn it on its top to set it down. The scraps don't go back into the box or into the block. You want to put these into the pug mill. They can be reused easier then. They dry out too much when they're on the block. So the block should stay pretty pure. Uh, so there's my piece that I'm going to work with. And I'm going to go ahead and just let it be on, on here uh, with the paper towel because my my bath that I'm going to use for it, which is square. I'm just going to center it on there, and I'm going to put the styrofoam that I'm working with, or the foam, on top of it, and I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to make sure that I keep pressure so that it doesn't move on me when I flip it. One arm above, one arm below, and flip. And then when I pick this up, if it sticks, I need to just get my fingers on the edge of one of the edges, and then it will release. I kind of walk my fingers forward to get it to release. And going to work with it that way. Uh, I could also work with another piece of styrofoam 
I'm going to really quick flip this. I could have done that with the board again. Okay, so that I have the this up and I have the styrofoam underneath it. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and level throughout that, and then I'm going to push. And what this is going to do is create the little tray part, and the styrofoam just allows it to get a crease down into it. Just walk my hands all the way around it and pick that back up and that gives me with the ledge to work on this is when I can take a lot of you printed something out to put on top to draw uh, what I would do is take my printout cut it down to a square so you know where it's going put it on top just use a dull pencil or a, a pen and draw in the design and then you can take that off and carve it back down in a little bit further the carving tools that we have, there's a bunch on the back table back there, but uh, I wouldn't use the needle tool to actually dry your designs for two reasons. The needle tool leaves too thin of a line so that the glaze will fill it in, and then it also leaves too sharp of a line. And so I would use either those or I would press down in. Um, you can also use any of these tools that are here. Any these bowls will be on the back table back there too. I'm just going to push in a few different designs. And you can either push it straight down in and then pull it back out by using a needle tool or something if it doesn't release right away. You can also use, this will be back by the tools back there too. This is uh, just a piece of styrofoam with WD-40 on it. That helps it release off of the clay afterwards if you need it to, too. And if I do any cutouts, I'm going to do some cutouts, some triangles or diamonds on there. So I'm just going to push it down into the WD-40, and then I can push it right through. I'm going to recreate similar to what I had on the demonstration there. Pull it back through. And then you can use a pencil or a needle tool or something and just push that out of there so you release it and work through. I'm going to do that on all four corners really quick. You don't have to probably reuse the WD-40 for a few times. It has a tendency to stay on there. Push through again. And one more time. And also with the line designs, you can press down in without actually carving. So I'm going to use the edge of this and um, one of these to kind of create. So these are just little wood scrap tools that you can work with. Um, I'm going to press in some lines going out here. I'm just going to push so that it gets kind of a triangular line design going in. I could do some diamonds. Actually, it's not a very good even diamond. I'm going to do a little star pattern next to it here. So these make good, deep and thick patterns so that your glaze will actually show down in it later on. And the thing that you want to have is basically a lot of repetition going on. So I'm going to stop with this and have my pattern kind of be like that. Now on this one, I did the fluted edges on it. You can totally do that if you want to on your piece to create that. All you have to do is kind of pick it up. And it's just like if you've ever done a pie just kind of flute the edges. If it's really soft like the clay is right now, you can use something to kind of pick it up. Use a couple of paper towels or some newspaper and I'm just going to put those underneath to kind of support. I do want to have this ledge up in the air. If the ledge is level, I'm going to run into problems with the glass actually wanting to run out of there. So I need to make sure that I don't let that happen. I need to make sure also that I have the same amount of the little ridges around if I'm going to do this. So I'm doing three, one in the center, and one in between there and the, the edge. 
all the way around. And I'm going to pick up the side and make sure that it's sticking up where it should be. So that's the idea. And then when you let it dry, you're going to let it dry with these underneath it. You can either transfer this onto a bat, or for the time being, if you want, you can keep it on the styrofoam until we get a chance to, uh, to get it off of there and, and when it's dry. So, okay. Questions?